Hi, I'm Ben. And I'm Luz. And today we're going to be showing you how to perform the deadlift. So if you're going to be deadlifting, you're actually going to want to put some weight on the bar. And pretty simple, we have a bunch of weights laying around. Uh, this one right here is a 10 pound. And then we'll pretty much just lift the bar up, put it on. And then when you are putting weight on the bar, you want to make sure you do use these clips here. So slide the clip on, latch it in, and we're good to go. So you're going to walk up to the bar, you're going to have the bar over your uh, laces, you're going to be able to see your toes, you're going to keep your core tight, you're going to have your shoulders pat, so down, back, um, you're going to keep your face uh, facing forward, and then your wrist is just going to be lowering down, um, so have like an even grip, you're going to come slowly go down, grab it, take that slack out of the bar, and look up. mistake we're going to be talking about is uh, hip hinging. Um, a common mistake that happens is people squat when they're doing a deadlift. Um, deadlift and a squat are two very different exercises and uh, look very different at the starting point and they look similar sometimes but um, there should be key differences that you see. Um, one of them being so when you deadlift you want to hip hinge. Uh, that basically means just kind of bending here at the hips like this. Uh, a good way to describe it is kind of saying, um, kind of like you're bowing down, so bowing down, like, you know, you're, like in the movies, you see an emperor, you bow down. Uh, so that's a good way to kind of think about it. Um, another way to think about it, too, is like if you're leaning against the wall, um, if you squat down, your knees are going to be able to go full 90 degrees, go down all the way, you're not going to be able to touch a wall. Um, versus when you hinge, when you lean back, it's kind of like you're sticking your butt out and it's going to tap the wall so you're not going to go all the way down. Um, another way to think about it too is um, kind of having your knees a little bit loose. So uh, what that kind of looks like is when you're coming down, um, when you squat, it's going to look like this. So I'm purposely kind of bending my knees going down into a squat, but you want to see it's kind of a soft bend at the knee. So you're going to hinge, so you know, bow down. Go down. If you can see, I'm kind of angled, like at a 45 degree angle versus in the squat, I was more of a 90. Um, so you're going to hinge, come down, and that should naturally kind of bend your knees a little bit, so you just want to force your knees to bend. You're just going to slowly come into a bend, hold on, and then you'll be able to pull up. So, one of the mistake too, what happens when people start getting into the rhythm of a deadlift, is they slowly start kind of uh, falling into a squat again. So you see when you start off perfect, perfect form, you know, uh, go up, down, good. And then by the time you start kind of lowering down into a squat. So now I'm kind of more in a squat again. And then it's kind of hard to lift a little bit because it's hurting me a little bit. <laughs> Um, so basically, um, something I like to think about and kind of can fix this a little bit is kind of imagine like you're sticking your butt out. I know it's kind of awkward to think about, about it that way, but it really does help to kind of make sure you're staying in that form. So you can see I'm kind of like <laughs> purposely kind of sticking my butt out a little bit, holding on, pulling on, squeeze, coming down, and then making sure I'm kind of still keeping that angle a little bit. So I'm up, again, pull up, squeeze, down. Yeah. And squeeze. Okay, so the second uh, mistake that we're going to talk about with the deadlifts is actually uh, rounding the back. So this is extremely common, especially when people are learning how to deadlift for the first time. And it looks just like this here. So a lot of individuals will come up to the bar and they will start the deadlift. But as they actually pick the bar up off the ground and they initiate the exercise, they will allow their back to round and then they will pull with a rounded back. I'm not going to demonstrate that because it's unsafe, but you get the idea. Basically, folks will come up, and then their backs will round, kind of like a scared cat. And we do not want that posture. That's going to be very, uh, it's going to be very unsafe for the spine and the low back. So, when we're doing the deadlift, we want to make sure that we're keeping our back at about a 45 degree angle. 
So usually, uh, once you get your foot position squared away, we're going to go for about shoulder width. You're going to reach down and grab the bar. And then I like to think, uh, butt down, chest up, kind of sit back into the um, deadlift position right there. And as you can see, before I even start the movement, perfect posture, and my back's at 45 degrees. And then from there, I'm just going to lift up, maintaining my posture nice and straight. And then as we go down, we're going to reverse the movement and then come back down to the starting position. to breathing for the deadlift the main thing you're going to want to make sure is that you're not holding your breath you've probably seen a lot of different videos where folks deadlift a heavy amount of weight and then they step away from the deadlift platform and then they just pass out on the ground usually that is due to not breathing correctly so basically what breathing correctly looks like is taking a big breath into the nose exhaling slightly through the mouth and kind of pushing the abdominals out and that right there is going to create inter-abdominal pressure. So that's going to be the position we're going to start in. And then as we do the deadlift, we're going to come up and exhale. So when we start in the bottom position, we're going to do that breathing maneuver. We're going to breathe in, exhale, and then from there, we're going to lock it in, keep the core tight as we come up, exhale. Every other rep from there on out, we're going to be breathing in on the way down. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is belts. Uh, weightlifting belts, we do have these for checkout at member services as well on the third floor of the campus rec. If you don't want to use these, just ask for a weightlifting belt, you can check these out. Um, so what are these good for? These are really good for kind of helping increasing awareness of your intra-abdominal pressure. Um, a lot of people will kind of put belts on and start lifting with these, and they will forget to keep their core, or their, they will forget to keep their core tight. So um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we grab a belt that actually fits us. You can see this one here is pretty small. I'm gonna grab it, loop it around, and I'm gonna hook it into these little holes here, and then loop it in. Now the belt should be kind of snug and kind of firm, but it should not be like cutting off your oxygen here. I could still take like a thumb and fit it in here, okay? So I still have like about a finger space. And then it's gonna be positioned just about right here, just about right above my hip, okay? Um, and then with this, it's basically just a cue. It helps you think about bracing your core and keeping it tight. So again, just, be, just because we put this on doesn't necessarily mean that we're safe. When we do put this on, it kind of helps us, helps to remind us to kind of push our core out a little bit and it will help protect our low back and our spine as well. So these are very common. You will see a lot of folks using these with deadlifts and they could be very good if you are uh, lifting heavier weight. But again, we just want to make sure, again, just to say it for like the 15th time, we still want to make sure we are keeping our core tight and then just use the belt as a cue not necessarily as uh, you know the end all be all. So just like that. And then once you're all finished with your set, you can take it off, rest for a little bit, and then hit another set whenever you're ready. When you do start deadlifting, you're gonna find out that usually the first thing for most people that goes on um, that loses strength the quickest is your grip. So we already kind of talked about um, when you were setting up with a deadlift, you want to make sure you do have a nice tight grip. And that basically just means that when you do grab the bar, you're going to get uh, your thumbs spaced out about right here. And then wrap your fingers and your thumb entirely around the bar. And that right there is going to be your standard grip. Now, if you're going through sets and reps of deadlifts and your grip is starting to give out, you cannot hold onto the bar anymore. You could also think about switching grips. So you could do an under over grip or a mixed grip. And this is usually a, a stronger position for a lot of people and it allows them to continue deadlifting uh, without adding any straps or chalk or anything. So what that looks like, it's gonna be one arm over, one, uh, one arm under just like this. And then you're still gonna be just about shoulder width here. You'll reach down, grab the bar like this. And then with the other hand that's under, you're gonna grab it just like this there. So. We're still going to we're still going to want to make sure our pink our fingers and thumbs are wrapped all around the bar and then from there we can do our deadlift so this might feel kind of strange at first but what i would suggest is that for the the hand that's going to be overhand use your dominant hand so i'm right-handed that's going to be my uh hand that's over and then my left hand is going to be the one that's under and then 
That is how you do the under over grip. If you're not interested in doing that, something else you could also use is uh, weightlifting straps. Basically, you'll just take these straps, loop them into your wrist here, and this right here will kind of help out your forearm and your grip a little bit. So we're just gonna loop them around our wrists just like this, pull them nice and tight. And then when we do set it up, we're going to pretty much just take the loose end of the strap. We're gonna wrap them around the bar, maybe two or three times, just like that. And right there, that's gonna basically add a little bit of extra strength and whatnot to the wrists and the forearm. So then when I set up for the deadlift, I'll still do it just like normal, double on, uh, double overhand grip, nice and tight grip, and then deadlift. And then now I'll be able to get a few more reps, maybe even a little bit more weight, and I won't have to worry about my wrists and arms fatigue. So if you do want to uh, continue deadlifting and your grip's given out, you could uh, try using different grips, you could try using straps, or lastly, you could try using chalk. Now, when it comes to chalk at Campus Rec, we do not allow the regular weightlifting chalk, but we do allow liquid chalk. And you could get it in member services. Um, it's kind of like liquid glue, or glue I guess is liquid anyway, but it's like glue that you put on your hands, you let dry, and it helps increase the grip a little bit. So you could try that out as well. Thank you everyone for tuning into our deadlifting video. We hope that it was a little bit helpful. You learned a few new skills, uh, techniques, or even the common mistakes that you might have been doing and now you can easily fix. Um, if you have any further questions, concerns, or anything else that you might want to ask, uh, feel free to reach out to any of us, any of the staff members, um, especially the personal trainers. If you see us walking around every now and then, uh, feel free to you know tap us, ask us a few questions. Um, or even send us an email or look on our website. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.